You ever wondered why Kid Cudi is called Kid Cudi? Seriously, why not Adult Cudi? Okay, so I know there are other artists that use Kid in their stage name, like Kid Leroy, or you could even say Lil Wayne or Lil Baby as well. But I feel like with Cudi, it's a much more expressive name, and it's tapping into something that gets to the heart of who he is as an artist. Lost childhood or being stuck in your childhood is a theme that makes up the whole Man on the Moon trilogy, but in particular, the first one. I think what makes Man on the Moon so great is it puts these grown up themes of depression, anxiety, trauma into a childlike context so anyone can relate to it. Even the production of the album, as Travis Scott said, it sounds like the Nutcracker. It's wrapping these adult ideas in kid friendly packaging. Just listen to what Cuddy himself said about it. Basically the title, the Man on the Moon theme is like, you know, all my life I felt like I was in my own little space, my own little world. I've always had a vivid imagination. So that's that, it's kind of like a play on the words. And then the end of the day, the album begins at night in a dream. Like I'm falling asleep and I'm taking you guys on a journey. You know what I mean? And the artwork, I was really inspired by um, 80s sci-fi movie posters. You know, like you think of Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, I just wanted to get something very illustrative. Even thinking of stuff like Indiana Jones, how the movie posters used to be. The whole album feels like a movie, with the narration from Common taking you through the different stages of Cuddy's dreams and nightmares, from the end of day until the morning. Cuddy's dad died when he was 11 years old, and whilst his grief continued well past his childhood, he suffered in silence and had to move on like it never happened. Like even with my first album, like I didn't realize that my father's death really like had an impact on me in the way that it did until I started writing about it. Then I was like, oh shit. Like, this is a problem for me. I didn't know that my dad dying was that big of an issue. You know, I guess it is. Oh, I guess being alone is an issue for me. I didn't know it was that big of an issue. I guess it is. You know, I guess being depressed is an issue. I didn't know what it was. You know, I'm just making music. I'm just doing what, what feels right, but this shit is coming out. And it's like things that I probably didn't pinpoint. So we get soundtrack to my life which is basically the autobiography of Kid Cudi. It starts out with probably one of the most iconic lines ever in a rap song. I got 99 problems and they out bitches. In like two seconds, he's completely subverted the genre. Of course, it's referencing Jay-Z's I got, got 99, 99 problems, problems, but a bitch ain't one hit me. Being a player is kind of ingrained in hip hop, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing. Because honestly, sometimes it is kind of fun to brag about how many options you have. But Cuddy's just tapping into the relationship issues that in reality, most people have. On the rest of the song, Cuddy goes into his family and how he grew up. He talks about what it was like for his mom to get him Christmas presents. He's really just explaining his problems and his feelings to kids who feel like they have no one to talk to, to people going through things at a younger age. The mission statement of Soundtrack to My Life is Cuddy has these issues that nobody can see, but he's gonna bring them to the light to give us something to relate to. That's such a wonderful sentiment, and it really kicks off the album in a good way. Throughout the album, Cuddy raps from the perspective of his younger self, like on My World, which is all about getting to say I told you so. It's every creative kid's dream to be successful in their art, and then be able to tell the other kids, I told you so. Creative kid's dream to be successful in their art, and be able to tell the other kids, I told you so. To see the utter regret on their face. Cuddy goes back to where he was during high school, talking about how he was picked on because he was a class clown. It's a flex because he actually did it. He made his childhood dream come true, and now this is his world. At the same time, it is almost an immature song, because it's longing for that validation he didn't get as a kid. I think a lot of artistic people can relate to that though, having these bursting creative minds but being ignored, being the underdog. In a way, we're all grown up kids, for better or worse. One of the references that I think is interesting on the final song, Up Up and Away, is when Cuddy compares himself to Peter Pan, the boy who never grows up. It's like he's stuck in this place of wanting to relive his childhood, or make those things right as an adult. That's his dream. Pursuit of happiness is all about trying to find happiness in a bottle, in drugs and alcohol. Cuddy thinks that if only he could be happy, all of his problems would be solved. It's a naive belief, but it goes to show how truly sad he is during this moment. Earlier on Solo Dolo, Cuddy questions, why does it feel so right when I know that it's wrong? He's really struggling to find solutions to this pain inside him. I'm thinking there's a, a quick fix and then uh, boom, everything's good yeah. and life is great forever and there's no more problems. Yeah. 
but that's not reality. And that's something I learned when I was in rehab. And I realized that, you know, you grow and you learn and you and you get these tools to that you have. So when you are in a, a similar situation again, you know how to handle it. Yeah. Where before you didn't have the tools and you crumbled, yeah. you know? You look at Mako Say, even though the subject matter of the song is very adult, it's almost a childish way to express it, if that makes any sense. Using the Lady Gaga sample, it's a very immature song. I poke her face is a classroom level joke. Also, I can't be the only one who thinks that it's just the most Kanye thing ever to hear poker face and be like, oh yeah, let's sample this and make it a song about getting brain. It's getting brain in the library because I love knowledge when you use your medulla, I've long gotta. I like that this album sets up the next one with the final interlude from Common. Because yeah, the journey isn't over. Cuddy wakes back up in reality and realizes it's okay, but he still hasn't fully figured out these things. I appreciate that Man on the Moon 2 doesn't try to fit into the style of the first one. I like that it's its own distinct thing artistically. There aren't any interludes, the production and lyrics are much darker, it has a very different atmosphere to the first one. But I think when you look at the Man on the Moon trilogy as a whole, it's just what Cuddy was going through at the time. And it's so powerful because the third one actually is the light at the end of the tunnel. Compared to the first two, it's so much more uplifting, so much more positive, and it's like you see the arc across the three albums. Even though this was his real life, when you listen to all three, it really feels like he did go on a journey. Cuddy's new show, Intergalactic, is coming out in just a month now. I'm so excited to see what he does with that, because it really feels like a full circle moment. Apparently it's going to be like a Saturday morning cartoon, but with a whole album behind it. Every episode is one song. It's also going to be a more adult oriented show, but done in this cartoon art style. And that's exactly what Man on the Moon is doing. He's been doing this since day one. But anyway, I feel like Man on the Moon is the quintessential Kid Cudi body of work. I think where Cudi is right now after going to rehab, he's grown and he's become more like adult Cudi, or just Cudi, which is a beautiful thing in of itself.